Some friends kind of half jokingly asked me if I could make a support for their sundial in the garden. And normally these are made of stone or metal and are very ornate, so I wasn't really sure, but I was thinking about it for a while. Uh, and I came up with the idea of putting the directions of a compass, north, south, east and west, onto a, a simple planed support. I had some fence post that was left over. It was pressure treated wood, so it would stand up to the weather and made my own lettering on it. Um, I'd looked online on uh, a few YouTube videos of people doing carvings of letters and rather than routing it with wood that would probably have a lot of tear out I wanted to create lettering with a V uh, and so marked out north, south, east and west it took me a while to get my head round which direction they would be because you have to kind of not only know where it's going to be pointing but uh, but what goes next to it and I was really cautious not to get them the wrong way around once the lettering was marked out I just did it free by uh, by hand and measurement. I didn't use any templates. I cut the straight parts uh, and then used a smaller chisel to, to do the ends, the ends of particularly the straight strokes, because these I wanted to go into a, a V rather like a, a V routing bit, but try to be a bit neater with it. So took a long time doing the lettering, so plenty of, of time and concentration, um, just with a, a mallet and some very sharp chisels. Uh, but it did take a while. Um, as you can see, one letter took quite a fair time. This is speeded up quite considerably. But in the end, with a lot of patience, I think it's a couple of days of work, really. Sort of on and off, not day and night. Um, but I got the uh, the lettering done. Then the support. I wanted it to be able to come apart. I didn't want it all fixed. So if part of it did rot or suffer in the weather, it could be replaced. So I used a bottom of a jar to, to create the curve, cut that on the bandsaw and then sanded everything off. These are just pieces of, of they're old um, pine, very tight, well-grown, um, close together grained pine. So I made four of them which would run round and the, uh, the post would slot down in the middle. I had the brilliant idea, looking back, of using uh, pocket screws. And I thought if I put all the pocket screws on the inside, then I wouldn't have to have any exposed screws on the outside, so it would seal better against the weather and also look better aesthetically. However, you can only do two because then you can't get the screwdriver in. So that was a bit of an unstarter, but I, I managed to get them done. It looks like I liked the, the design. The design was good. While I was doing this, I got adopted by a pigeon, which turned out to be a racing pigeon, which can be very valuable. But apparently the guidance is if you find a pigeon, a racing pigeon, just give it some food and water and let it hang around for a couple of days till it feels like it can fly off again. So it was with us for two days, but it was in the way a bit. really wasn't helping. So then I screwed the um, the base together on the outside using standard pocket screws and that created the, the base which I thought could go on any surface it wouldn't matter if it went on soil or grass or, or paving slabs. This is an old barometer that I'd had hanging around for a while it didn't work it was in pretty poor condition but it was beautiful timber um, I suspect teak and mahogany so there was a, a hole in the back for it to hang on the wall, but I drilled that out fully so it would fit a dowel. Um, I didn't want to put it all the way in because it was I wanted a very tight fit that would be sealed against the weather uh, once I put the finish on. So I used it, you can barely see there, but I used the bandsaw to, to cut the dowel down. The dowel was out of mahogany as well, which had a little spare square knocking about the, the workshop. So just glued it lightly and pressed it in. As I say, I wanted it to be a very tight fit. It was very dry in this day, so if anything, it's going to swell and it's going to fill that, that gap perfectly well. So just needed rubbing down um, and then the, the finish would, would sort it out. The sundial was going to be about to the edge of this block, so it would all be hidden anyway. Didn't need to fill the other one, that would be, uh, would be hidden. So created a square corners 
in here so it would just slot on top and it's just a fit that goes on with pressure so that as I say can come off and be replaced or the base can be replaced the lettering um, I put one coat of teak wood oil on this just as an extra barrier and then for the lettering I used a walnut stain I prefer walnut to to mahogany stain because it's nice and dark but you can kind of control the the brownness it doesn't have too much of a red tint to it but wanted to be really careful didn't want to get it um, spreading all over and say this this post is a very open grain wood so it would bleed into the wood if I wasn't careful it took maybe an hour for each coat to do all of the lettering but taking a lot of care making sure that it was neat I didn't want it to be sanding it down afterwards um, because it had one coat of, of um, oil uh, and I didn't want that to be uh, to be interfered with so that's the end result with another two coats of teak wood oil just to protect it against the weather and it was a bright sunny day that day so it uh, it looks really good I'm quite happy with the way it came out and then slotted into the base and then out in the sunshine and then finally in someone's garden with a sundial on top.